This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. This video is going to teach you how to interpret reduced row echelon form, otherwise known as RREF, augmented matrices. There are three different types of forms, which are going to be the form where there's one solution, another form where there's zero solutions, and then another form where there's going to be an infinite number of solutions. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of all of that, uh, there's some things that you have to know. Um, when using RREF, you either have to know how to do it by hand using the Gaussian method, or uh, have to know how to use a calculator uh, to get those augmented matrices. So one or the other, either doing it by hand or by calculator, don't care. Um, but once you've got the augmented matrix, this video is going to show you how to interpret those because it's a little tricky. So let's talk about case one where there's one solution. Now you're, you're dealing with the system of equations. Now in, in this particular instance, I'm going to try to do something that has a little bit more meat to it. So there's three equations and three unknowns. And after taking those three equations and three un unknowns, either using a calculator or using the um, Gaussian method, you have now have this augmented matrix. And we're now trying to figure out what the heck this means. Well, if you notice the first three columns, uh, we have ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Now, those three columns represent something called the identity matrix. And that's kind of special. If you ever see that, you know, after doing reduce row echelon form, you get to that point where you get that uh, identity matrix it's telling you right now that there's one solution. Okay, now what is the solution? Well, keep in mind that in this special form, the first column represents your first variable, let's say it's x. The second column is the second variable, let's say it's y. And then the third column represents the third variable, which traditionally we would say it's z. Okay, well, if that's the case, then the RREF is screaming at you, right? It's telling you right now what the solution is. See, that first row really just means 1x plus 0y's plus 0z's equals 7. In other words, algebraically speaking, that means 1x equals 7, or just plain old x equals 7. Uh, let's look at the next row. That other row means, likewise, 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals 3. Or in other words, for the same thinking, that's y equals 3. Okay, following that exact same logic, you could see in the last row, that's 1z equals negative 5, or just plain old z equals negative 5. Okay, so your answer is x is 7, y is 3, z is negative 5. And you have your ordered triplet. Sometimes we write the triplet as 7, 3, negative 5. We've got our answer. All right, and as I'm going through this, I'm just going to use the standard old variables x, y, and z. But of course, you could do this problem with any variable. I'm just showing you how to interpret what that cluster of numbers are called an augmented matrix. As promised, here's case two. So looking at the first three columns of this new augmented matrix, you could see that we do not have the identity matrix. See, I don't have ones along the diagonals. See, I'm missing one right there. Um, and I don't have zeros everywhere else. All right, so it's not an identity matrix. Okay, so I know now of the three possibilities, one solution, no solutions, infinite number of solutions, I know it cannot be the first one. It is, it is not a single solution. All right, now which is it? Is this going to be uh, no solutions or an infinite number of solutions? Well, it's really easy to tell. Look at the last row. If you interpret what the last row means, it's going to provide you with a hint. So that's 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 5. In other words, that's 0 equals 5. The last time I checked, 0 equals 5 is nonsensical. 0 is not equal to negative 5, or to positive 5. So if you're ever given an equation that doesn't make any sense, that's illogical, um, 
and you hold it up to the true or false standard, that's a false statement. Therefore, if you're given a non-identity matrix with a false statement in it, there's no solution. Okay, so I know this one has no solution. There's no need to go any farther. I'm gonna chalk this up as a no sol uh, solution situation. Go on to the next problem. So here's case three. So case three, well, it's a little bit more difficult. So that's why um, we're gonna take our time with this one. And I'm gonna have two examples for this one. So uh, looking at the first three columns, you'll see that it is not an identity matrix. I'm, I don't have a ones on the diagonals. Um, on the diagonal, sorry, singular. And then there should be zeros everywhere else. I don't have zeros everywhere else. Okay, so since it's not an identity matrix, I now look at the last row and see what it tells me. So that's 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0, otherwise known as 0 equals 0. Holding it to the true or false standard, that is true. So with those two things in mind, it is not an identity matrix. I'm left with a true statement. There's an infinite number of solutions. All right, so how do I now find all infinite solutions? Well, this video is going to show you how to find all infinite solutions. Looking at the first row, you can see it's saying 1x plus 0y plus 2z equals negative 5. But I could write that a little less complicated and say that is x uh, plus 2z equals negative 5. All right, so there's the first row. Now the second row, if I use the same kind of thinking, that 0x plus 1y plus 1z equals 3. Uh, in other words, I'm going to say that that is y plus z equals 3. All right, and then that last one we're not going to use because it doesn't have any variables. It's, everything's out of it. So if, if you'll notice between these two equations, there is a letter common to both of them. And I'm going to call that letter the independent variable. In other words, z could be any value. Uh, and when I write my solution as x, y, and z, right? I'm going to write x, y, and z. Well, I'm telling you that z could take on any value. See, since z is in both of these equations, I call it the independent variable. In other words, z could be anything. Now, imagine doing some algebra. If I wanted to solve the second equation for y, I would move the z over. If I move the z over to the other side, otherwise known as subtracting z from both sides, I'm going to get 3 minus z, right? I'm going to get y equals 3 minus z. There you go. So in place of y, I'm putting 3 minus z. Uh, let's see. Now, the first equation, again, I'm going to solve this for x by moving the 2z over to the other side. In other words, subtracting 2z from both sides. I'm going to get negative 5 minus 2z. And there you got it. There are the infinite number of solutions. So z could take on any value. If z was 0, then this would be 3 minus 0, or just 3. And this would be negative 5 minus 2 times 0, or otherwise known as negative 5. So negative 5, 3, 0 is a one of infinite number of solutions. And you can keep doing that. You can choose different values for z. But this is what it looks like in general. So here's another uh, example of the infinite solution. So again, look at the first three columns. It's not an identity matrix look at the last row it's telling us a truth statement zero equals zero okay because of those two things that's how i know that this is an infinite solution scenario okay now how do we interpret it well let's look at the first row the first row is telling us 3x uh, plus y plus 2z is equal to one the second row is telling us that we have a minus y uh, we've got, uh, let's see, plus 7z equals negative 2. All right. For this problem, I'm going to state which the uh, independent variable is. 
And in this case, I'm going to deal with z being the independent variable, because you'll notice that z is in both of these equations. Yep, I could just say y is the independent variable. It's just a lot easier to call the z the independent variable, because when I move it over to the other side, it gets rid of those ugly coefficients of 2 and 7. It's just nicer to, to do uh, algebraically. In the end, I, I land up with fractions here anyway, but uh, as we'll see. All right, so what do we do now? Now, remember that when we write our solution, we write our solution as x, y, and z. Now, I already told you that z is going to be the independent variable. So if we take the second equation, I'm going to move the z over to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. Um, so I'm going to get negative y equals negative 2 minus 7z. Then to solve for y, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. And I'm going to get 2 uh, plus z, 7z is equal to y. Okay, so there's my y value. So I'm putting in the y in the second uh, part of our ordered triplet. Okay, now I gotta solve for x, so I can put the x value right there. Now this is a little bit more tricky because I gotta move over the y and the 2z to the other side. So that's gonna be one minus y minus 2z, right? So three x equals one minus y minus 2z. Then I get to divide everything by three to get x alone. All right, so I'm gonna get one minus y minus 2z but then I have to divide everything by 3. Right? Good enough, right? Okay, now you're thinking, well, we're done, right? Not quite. So what I should do next, because, because this would be like a partial credit situation if you left it like this, is you'll notice this is the value for y. y has been solved in terms of z. Yep. So if that's what the y value really is equal to, then I'm going to replace this y with this y value. Okay, now it's gonna make things a little bit more complicated in that numerator. I'm gonna get one minus this y value, two plus seven z minus two z all over three. Okay, so there you go, there's my x value. Okay, now I got my y value, two plus seven z, and I got a z. Now, what we can do is clean this up, and it's a nasty set of fractions here, but you're going to get, uh, if, and if you play with this, which you really have to land up playing with this, but you're going to get 1 minus, actually it's 1 third, minus 2 thirds, minus 7 thirds z, minus 2 third z, 2 plus 7 z, z. All right, and what we can do here is combine some like terms. Why not scroll down? Okay, so I'll scroll down there a little bit, and let's write that out. So let's see, 1 third take away 2 thirds, that's a negative third. I got negative 7 thirds z minus 2 thirds z, that's a minus 9 thirds z. Okay, then I have a 2 plus 7 z and a z. And there you go. I have my ordered triplet with my x, my y, and my z as an ordered pair. Sorry, ordered triplet. And we have all infinite solutions. There you go. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our over 200 text-based lessons, interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. You won't be disappointed. I understand the reduced row. Echelon form? Wow, echelon. So important.